Hello, welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to take a look at the gospel lesson appointed for Rogate Sunday, the sixth Sunday after Easter. It comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father." In that day you will ask nothing you will ask in my name and I do not say to you that I will ask the father on your behalf for the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God I came from the father and have come into the world and now I am leaving the world and going to the father His disciples said Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you, did, that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear Christians, 2022, I don't know if you know this, it's the 100th anniversary of 1922. Not that anything special happened in 1922, but I just want you to take a moment and think about all the things that have happened in the last 100 years. 1922, the United States economy was roaring, people were getting rich. The flapper movement was going on. And then what happened? The stock market crashed. The Great Depression. World War II. The Korean War. The Vietnam War. Protests in the streets. People being hippies. Conflicts within our own nation. Stagflation. Economy, economy was falling and collapsing. High interest rates in the 1980s. The war in Iraq. The war in Afghanistan. All because of 9-11. The assassination of political leaders. The assassination of social leaders. It's been quite the hundred years, right? I've only mentioned a few things. Why do I mention these things? Well, what's coming ahead? The stock market's falling again. Inflation is running rampant. Interest rates are rising. Taxes are going up. The pandemic has appeared to slow down, but at the same time appears to be picking up. New diseases are being found and trumpeted in our ears to make us afraid. What about in your personal life? How are your relationships with your family members? Are there things you can't talk about with them? Are there conflicts? Those conflicts manifested themselves in silence, the inability to talk to your loved ones, or the desire not to. What's going on in your life? Are you always doing what's right? 
Do you know what's right or what to do? How do you respond? How will you vote? Should you vote? Will it make any difference at all? Will your job be secure or will there be layoffs, cutbacks? Will you get a raise or will you make less money next year? What things are ahead for you? What's happened in the last hundred years isn't that much different than what's happened since the creation of this world. Jesus says it in today's gospel lesson. In the world, you will have tribulation. Constant tribulation. One of our young members, just, uh, oh, I'd say five or six years old, came up during Easter week to me and said, Pastor, you know what sin is like? It's like you're in the swimming pool and you can't keep your head above the water. It keeps on rising up into your face. That's the tribulation of this world also because sin and tribulation are related. The one causes the other and the other causes the one. That's not all that Jesus wants us to focus on in today's gospel lesson. He also says this, Take heart, I have overcome the world. Christ has. By his work on the cross, he has overcome the world. He has defeated sin and death and the power of the devil. He's destroyed the permanence of what they do. All the tribulation that's caused institutions to erode, families into conflict, people to hunger and thirst, get sick and die, all of that Christ will put right. And he does so by the cross. In his death and in his resurrection, he is victorious. He overcomes this world's tribulation. And what's more, he tells us in today's gospel lesson about a tool that we have to face all the tribulation of this world. We can talk to God. We can ask the Father in the name of Jesus. And God the Father will take care of us in the tribulation. Now, this doesn't mean that he's just going to make all the tribulation disappear. If so, why don't we just pray that way? Lord, make this world perfect. It doesn't work that way, at least not immediately. God will make a perfect world. But we're just not there yet. He's waiting. He's waiting for more to come to him. He's waiting in his grace and in his mercy. And as we wait, as we face tribulation, as we go day by day, moment by moment, through all the challenges of this world, we talk to God. We ask him to take care of us, to heal our illnesses, to provide food and shelter, to send to us his word so that we remain in the faith. We talk to God in the name of Jesus. Where do we do this more than right here at church in the divine service? We talk to God in the name of Jesus. And Jesus says this, I have said these things to you, encouragement to pray, to ask God, to talk to him so that you may have peace. See, God might not give us exactly what we ask for, but he has given us Jesus, who has overcome this world and all of its tribulation, who's promised to take us out of this world and into the world that's to come 
the perfect world, the world without end. He's promised in the death and resurrection of Jesus to make all things right. And he will. And that's your peace. In the name of Jesus, who is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.